so we bathed and dried him properly yesterday. He had some trimming done about a week ago. So now we're at the dog show. What do we do to fresh him up? So I like to do what's called a bucket bath. So I personally like to do it with self rinse because self rinse dries quickly. Um, but you could also do it with your favorite shampoo diluted like about 10% to one in a spray bottle. Um, you could do it with two buckets, one with soapy water, one with clean water, however you want to do it. But basically we're going to like freshen up all of his furnishings and also look at him. Like he has some places where he's like maybe laid down and uh, have a little bit of bed head here. We want to really show you how to properly dry this neck area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shampooing him and just like kind of spraying that shampoo where he needs it just to freshen up these furnishings, his neck area. Obviously lots of dogs need um, freshening up where they might pee on themselves, but we really want these furnishings to look fantastic. So we're really just going to, especially here where they're a little bit curly, get right in there. Hawks are important because we're going to be chalking and finishing his legs. So just kind of all over, I like to clean up their little faces a little bit. And you know, this part of his top line looks pretty good. We don't need to worry about that too much. So we kind of get that soap in there. And obviously he's really clean. Uh, so we don't have to worry about how much we're actually shampooing down there. But once he has styling products on him or he gets dirty, obviously we are going to do some more work in that area. We make sure that we had more suds happening. So now I have a nice bucket of water here. You'll notice that I took the, um, you're all right, up, 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 good boy. You'll notice that I took the towels off the table. So now I'm just gonna sponge out where I have that soap um, to make sure that it's nice and clean. Obviously, this is warm water. Hopefully you're in a building that you can get some nice warm water. It's just obviously more pleasant for you and your dog if the water is warm. It's a sponge full of water. There you go. I really want to get this shoulder and neck area. So I'm making sure that I'm getting it nice and wet. So, you know, use your judgment. Where does he um, need to be wetter to, in order to make the finished look? Look how we want it. Um, these are the problem areas for me. So I don't make sure that I get in there. And obviously you're going to do both sides. Then I'm going to move the bucket out of my way. And I always like to um, wash the head last and dry it first. I just think it's nicer for our little friends. Get the head nice and dry. And then you notice that when I'm drying them, I'm not like going like this, right? I'm not making the hair look worse. I'm always like going in the direction that I really want the hair um, to lay and behave. I just think that every little bit kind of helps and I'm squeezing the water out. I'm not again moving in a circular motion. I'm like taking it and grabbing it and moving to another dry area of the towel to make sure I can get as much of that water out as possible. Especially on this coat type, but also like setter spaniels, anything like that after the bucket bath, I like to take my brush and I'm just using a pin brush here, but I really just like to stand up to like kind of style the hair. Um, before I start drying it, just so I kind of can see what's going on. Um, you know, and I can see that this neck hair, it really wants to wrap around this way, right? And this makes the neck look shorter. We really want the neck hair to go down the shoulder, creating that, that look of that layback. Also makes the neck look longer. I want some more um, volume in this bib. This looks great here. Remember, we never want to see any hair coming out of the side of the front leg. So I'm always brushing it in, brushing all of the furnishings down, stifle hair forward, pant hair down. And this is the same way that I would also dry him. You want all this leg hair up to create that really beautiful bone. Uh, make, you know, he has great bone, but we don't wanna make this hair flat and take away from that look, right? Um, he does have a little bit of remedial work that we need to do with his tail. So we need to pay attention to this tail hair. Also the top of his tail, if you see how nicely the hair is here and then the top of his tail um, really needs this kind of area stripped out a little bit better. So we're gonna show you how to do that uh, when it comes to trimming his tail. It shouldn't be bushy on the bottom and the top. So we need to get rid of some of this. And we really wanna work on these, sh these shoulders, right? So his shoulder layback, if you 
His withers are here, point of shoulder. This is quite nice, but the way the shawl of his hair curls forward, it makes him look steeper in the shoulder and shorter in the neck. So this is an area that we're gonna pay a lot of attention to all day today. So we're gonna pay a lot of attention to it now, uh, when we're trimming it, when we're drying it and styling it as well. And then finally, when we're toweling it, cause you can actually see the difference, right? So if you look even at his neck now, his neck and his shoulder with the hair like this, and the neck and the shoulder with the hair, how it wants to be like this, huge difference, right? So we really wanna pay a lot of attention. This is something that you're probably even gonna to have to touch up before he goes in the ring, but it starts right now. So once we have all of this brushed out, I like to move on to using some kind of styling product. So the styling product I've chosen today is coat dressing. Um, basically it's mousse, but it comes out in an aerosol kind of form. So it's just easier to get all over your dog. You could use any kind of mousse you wanted to use, um, but I like coat dressing and I'm gonna show you why. So you give it a really good shake. And then again, I'm gonna pay attention to those areas that we talked about before. And you can see it just sprays all the way through that hair. Now I want lots in his bib, so I can pull up his bib and just get it in there. Same with his front legs. You know, I want to brush that hair up, make sure there's room for it to get in between each hair. So here's another tip, right? You don't want the hair flat and then spray the mousse on it because it's only getting on one surface. You want the hair up uh, either with your fingers or with a brush would be better. So here we go with the brush so that the product can actually get on all sides of that ha hair, right? And just like, I really like to get it in there wherever he needs it. And again, like I'm still always styling it in the direction that I want to go. If we had been forced drying him like from completely wet, we would do this at about the 80% dry mark. And then another area that I want to get a lot of this product in is this hawk, front of the front leg. So, oh, also in Goldens, I think it looks really pretty if you get some of this in their ears because it makes their ears look really plush at the show. There we go. What a good boy you are. Hi guys. Thanks for joining us for our latest Leading Edge Dog Show Academy tutorial. Don't forget to go to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com to see some of our premium content and webinars where we go in depth on grooming, training, and so much more. Of course, we would love for you to like and subscribe so you don't miss another video here on YouTube. And if there's something that you would like to see that you haven't yet seen on our YouTube channel, of course, just drop it in the comments below and we'd be more than happy to bring you that content. So once again, I'm Allison from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and I really, really hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial.